Why on earth are Chelsea currently in Poland trying to hijack this Arsenal bid for Mikhailo Mudrik? Why are Chelsea trying to scupper this Arsenal deal? Mikhailo Mudrik is a player who has made it so desperately clear that he wants to sign for Arsenal. I have read fairly recently that he is fantasising about making his Arsenal debut for the club against Manchester United. On the 22nd of January, it was specified. He is so dedicated to joining Mikel Arteta's team and yet, Chelsea have decided to try and scupper the deal that we have flown to Poland and are paying over the odds. Now, there is so much to explore here, but none of this makes any sense. Chelsea's recruitment strategy has been so bad for so long and is at the epicentre of everything that has gone wrong for our club. Signing a player like Mudrik, perhaps gazumping Arsenal, forcing Mudrik to miss out on his supposed dream. I was following him on Instagram for a period. He made no secret that he was desperate to join this Mikel Arteta revolution. So the only reason that he would be signing for Chelsea is because Chelsea gazump Arsenal, splash our cash, spray it all over Europe and force the player effectively to come and sign for Chelsea. Does that bode well? Does that sound like a good sounding board and a good logic for bringing a player to the club? Is that something that we believe will be conducive to good performance? We have signed so many players and therefore have so many players in this squad who do not want to be there. We are full of mercenaries, players who are there simply for a payday. Do you think Kaladu Koulibaly has dreamed of playing for Chelsea? Of course he hasn't. Do you think Kai Havertz dreamed of playing for Chelsea? Do you think he loves Chelsea? Do you think Cucurella adores Chelsea and bleeds blue? None of them do. They are mercenaries. They don't want to be there. And Mikhailo Mudrik, this isn't about him per se, but Mikhailo Mudrik has told us implicitly that he doesn't want to sign for the club. If we just use a little bit of inference, we know that he doesn't want to play for Chelsea because he's told us specifically he wants to play for Arsenal. So why are we trying to sign a player who specifically doesn't want to sign for us? We are Arsenal rivals. We are rivals of that club. He isn't going to want to sign for us. So I think it is potentially a really dangerous strategy to employ, bringing a player who has already told us he doesn't want to be there. Secondly, where is our transfer policy? Where is our transfer uh, overarching strategy? We do not have one. Have we been following the career of Mikhailo Mudrik? Has Todd Bowley been aware of Mudrik for the past 18 months? Has he been tapping him up, keeping eyes on him, keeping tabs on him, wondering about how he's developing, thinking about how a player like that would fit into a Graham Potter team, thinking about how he would slot in? Would he link up well with Cucurella? Did we sign Cucurella, perhaps? Because, we, of course, we didn't. Arsenal were trying to sign him. We looked at him. We thought, you know, we've got loads of money. We're going to go for it as well. You, well. Arsenal think he's good. Arsenal were good at signing players. We're going to do that. We need to get good in the transfer market. And this isn't the way to do it. This isn't it. It's so essential to have a good transfer policy. It's also so important to not openly pay over the odds. Do not pay over the odds. Mikhailo Mudrik isn't worth 100 million euros. That's a fact. He isn't worth 100 million euros. So don't pay that. Have a principle in the transfer market. It is integral to achievement. Newcastle United, richest club in the world. They are exceptional in the transfer market, which is ironic because they don't actually have to be good at transfers. They are wealthy enough that they don't have to be good. Manchester City are wealthy enough that they don't have to be good in the transfer market. And yet... They are excellent. They keep a revolving door policy going in, or going on. They bring money in and they sign the players that they want to sign because they have an excellent scouting network that bodes very well for their future aspirations. We've got to stop doing this. We've got to stop just spending and splurging because we have so much money. It isn't conducive to a harmonious dressing room. Sign not only a footballer, sign the man. This is something that Eddie Howe has done so well. Eddie Howe has signed people that want to buy in to his philosophy at Newcastle United, that want to buy in to the DNA of the club. Do they want their name intertwined into the fabric of Newcastle United? That is what he's looking for. When he talks to players, he meets them. He finds out their personal life. He finds out who they are. He talks about the intensity that he wants to play with. He talks about the intensity being Newcastle United's identity. We signed Aubameyang, the very definition of the opposite of all of this. Sign the person as well. And this isn't about Mudrik. I'm sure he's a brilliant player. I'm sure it's going to work out for him. You know, I've 
Listen to De Zerbi speaking about him. He speaks so highly. It isn't about him. It's about, does he want to sign for Chelsea? Do we need another player at the club who openly told us he doesn't want to be there? He openly told anybody that would listen that he was desperate to sign for Arsenal. He fantasises about making his debut for Arsenal against Manchester United. Apparently, some of his friends were talking about him scoring in the North London derby during the World Cup because they thought that this deal could have been done in time for him to be featuring tomorrow. So he's constantly told us he hasn't shied away from the fact at all. He has been honest. And in an era where footballers are incredibly closeted, where footballers won't speak openly about their feelings, fair play to him. He's told us he wants to play for Arsenal. And somehow Chelsea have heard that and have decided to fly to Poland to try and scupper Arsenal's deal. We've made this mistake before, recently. Players' desires matter. The player preference is incredibly relevant. Do you remember when Chelsea were desperately trying to sign Jules Koundé? And the player, because of what had happened the previous year, the player didn't particularly want to come to Chelsea. Do you remember when Chelsea thought that we were going to sign Rafinha? We pursued Rafinha, we were desperate to sign him. The player chose not to come. The player chose to go to Barcelona. Player preference is relevant. So, factor it in. Don't gazump a player. And, and on some level, scupper his dream. To bring him to Stamford Bridge. To play for a rival of the club that he's fantasising about playing for. Like I say, this isn't about him. I'm sure he'd be a good player. I hope he, If he Chelsea sign him, I hope it really works out. But as a methodology, this just feels so weird. We have so many players who don't want to be at the club, so many players who openly don't want to be there, who clearly aren't keen on playing for Chelsea. And yet this is our approach. We've already made a bit of a pig's ear of this Enzo Fernandez transfer. And now we are flying to Poland to scupper a deal by offering 100 million quid when we know the player isn't worth 100 million quid. So we're going to pay over the odds to stop him going to Arsenal, to stop him living out his dream, to sign the player who doesn't want to sign. It's wild, isn't it? It's wild. I mean, look, if he ends up being a Chelsea player, I will pledge him nothing but love and support. And I really hope it works out because we could do with some cover on that side. And to be fair, Arsenal don't need it. They've got Martinelli over there. So, but wow, it just, I just don't know how this one is going to play out. I don't know where it's going to go. Can someone let me know in the comments? If you have any knowledge on this, let me know. And also, do you agree with my thoughts here? That scuppering the deal, even if he ends up signing for Chelsea, scuppering Arsenal's plans, forcing the player to sign for Chelsea when he doesn't want to do that, it just doesn't sit comfortably, doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel conducive to success. Am I wrong? I really would like your counsel on this, so please comment below, let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And I would love to welcome you into this community. So please click that subscribe button. Have a wonderful Saturday night. I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da.